Jacob's seed, the oldest brother of Joseph, John, and Fate seed, an army veteran and one of the antagonists of Far Cry 5. While Far Cry 5 was okay, one thing really stuck with me and most of the players, the ingenious level design of the mission Only You. In almost all your interactions with Jacob's seed in the game, you will hear him say things drawing from his internal philosophies like The world is weak. We will call the herd. I told you you're not a hero. You are a tool. You know your purpose. He always suggests how something is coming and how he's going to use you, the player. And the most fascinating thing about the level only you is when you witness him keep all his words and end up feeling like a puppet of the ventriloquist Jacob Seed. As you find out, the purpose Jacob was referring to was killing an ally named Eli Palmer, the leader of a resistance faction named Whitetail Militia that fought against the forces of Jacob Seed. As many who have played this level would agree, Jacob not only uses the player's character as a tool to reach Eli, but when you, the player itself, kill Eli, but realize it only after a split second is when the shock and surprise crawls upon you. And for that brief moment you absolutely feel like it wasn't really the character Jacob was talking to all this time, but really he was talking directly to you. You realize he was not really brainwashing the character, but actually brainwashing you the player. You never expect a level to be so influencing and that's where this particular level design of Far Cry 5 catches you off guard and manages to do a fine job of playing you, a fine job of playing your mind and controlling your actions. Let's break down the level design and see how it manages to do that. The storyline of Far Cry 5 begins with you, an unnamed junior deputy, along with four other law officers walking into Joseph Seed's Eden's Gate Church to arrest him on the suspicion of kidnapping with the intent to harm. Joseph Seed! I have a warrant issued for your arrest on the suspicion of kidnapping with the intent to harm. Now I want you to step forward and keep your hands where I can see them. Now Mr. Joseph here is the leader of the Doomsday Cult that he and his siblings have built up, known as the Project at Eden's Gate. The members or the cultists are also referred to as Peggy's. Why do you keep calling them Peggy's? Project at Eden's Gate, P-E-G, Peggy's is what the locals call them. We get to see how loyal or rather brainwashed the members of the cult are when things start to get out of control already. Bill. On Joseph's command, the Peggy's calm down, and then with no resistance, Joseph raises his hands towards you to let you handcuff him. And hell fall with him. Rookie, cuff this son of a bitch. The calm of the seed siblings behind only suggests the calm before the storm. Rook, put the cuffs on him. And after arresting Joseph Seed, things quickly go south. Everyone survives the crash and the Peggy's then try relentlessly to take you and your team down.
everyone gets caught except for you. A character named Dutch saves you. Dutch explains to you how all the roads have been closed and no one is coming to help. And together, we will march to You know what that shit means? It means the roads have all been closed. It means the phone lines have been cut. It means there's no signals getting in and out of this valley. He also tells you how all your partners are alive and each handed to a separate member of the Seed family. Little I can gather is that your partners are alive. For now. Seems they've been split up. Each one handed off to a different member of Joseph's family. There's got to be people out there willing to fight back against this cult. We just, we need to show them how. We need to build us a resistance. So the first thing we're going to do is get control of this island. Once we got some breathing room, we can figure out what's coming next. With that, your only way of escape now is to fight the Seed family, take them down and rescue your partners. Now, Hope County is divided into three regions. To the north, you got the Whitetail Mound. It's run by Jacob Seed, oldest brother of that fucking family. Jacob's the one training the cult, and he's damn good at what he does. Eli and the Whitetail Militia have been trying to hold out, but Jacob's ready to step on their necks. The world of Far Cry 5 is divided into regions, each region controlled by a member of the Seed family. And to escape, you have to confront each family member. And you do that by causing havoc in the regions and building up resistance. You build up resistance by causing trouble for each member in the region. And now we get to the main part. When you start causing trouble in Whitetail Mountains, the region controlled by Jacob Seed, you also start grabbing the man's attention. And that's also when he begins on his master plan to brainwash you. Not the character, but you, the player. With enough havoc and resistance built up against Jacob Seed, your very first interaction with him is after he sends his group of elite cultists named The Chosen to kidnap you and bring you to him, which begins the mission The World is Weak and Jacob's first step in brainwashing you. Upon waking, the character is strapped onto a chair along with two other NPCs by Stacy Pratt, one of the four characters' partners. After which Jacob Seed makes an entrance, it starts to speak a monologue, drawing from his personal philosophies and displaying images of predators on a projector. We can see how Jacob Seed has already started brainwashing his captives, trying to get them to give in to his philosophies and join his forces. He speaks of how the world is weak and how it is now required to call the herd which means to remove or kill animals with undesirable traits to promote the life of only the ones with the desirable traits. What he really means here is to remove and kill the forces acting against and not giving in to the plans of his own and his brother, Joseph C. the project at Eden's Gate. After which he opens his music box and the song Only You starts to play that triggers a violent episode in the character. Pay attention how not only the character is being triggered, but also the other two captive NPCs in the back. The character then finds itself in a dream-like sequence, starting with a room very similar to the one where Jacob was talking to us moments ago. The projector screen with the wolf image, the table, and also the two captured and strapped NPCs in very similar positions from the real world exist in this sequence. We begin with a timer, and the only way to escape Jacob's spell and his violent and strange episode seems to be killing the other targets, moving forward before the time runs out and taking down the final target as the objective states. At this point, you are just trying to kill the other targets trying to kill you, not let the timer run out and find an escape by moving forward and making it to the last target.
Once you go down this tunnel, which seems to be the only place to go, the character starts to gain consciousness and return back to the real world. What a mess. We check those chairs. Mm. I'm still in the room, still for days. Walk up, get some windows open. Mm, yes, sir. Someone shut that music off. Christ, it's Sully. When did they get him? Why are we even bothering with this? They're all check them anyways. Why am I all stuck on corpse duty? It has been quite a few days since our first interaction with Jacob Seed. As we learned, the other captured NPCs were members of a resistance faction known as White Tail Militia that fought against the forces of Jacob Seed. And this here is the leader of White Tail Militia, named Eli Palmer. Eli rescues you and takes you back to his wolf's den. You're gonna be okay, hero. White Tail's got you now. We're bringing them back to the wolf's den? Where else? Tammy's not gonna like this. Don't worry about Tammy, she'll be fine. Also, it is very evident the dreamlike sequence begins in a room very similar to the one Eli finds us in. You can tell that by noticing the messages painted on the wall and the same door on the left side. Also, it's hard to tell if it was us who killed the other captured NPCs, but probably it wasn't us because the character and the other captives are still tied to the chair when Eli and his team finds us days later and cuts the rope or whatever to set us free. So probably the other NPCs died because they didn't make it out of Jacob's spell, the violent dreamlike episode. So they were not strong enough. After your rescue, you join the Whitetail Militia in their fight against Jacob C and cause more trouble in the region. After enough resistance and havoc again, Jacob sends for his chosen to capture you and bring you to him once more. This time the character wakes up in a cage, sharing it with another captain. One of you will be strong, not again. As Joseph makes his way towards the cage, Brad tries to tell us how one of us will be strong, and the other captive reacts to it by saying, not a game, referring to Jacob's violent dreamlike sequence. Once Joseph is done talking to you, Jacob pulls out the music box and opens it once again to play the song Only You, and that triggers the dreamlike violent episode again. This time you, the player, know exactly what to do. You've been here before. So you pick up the gun right away and start shooting, making your way forward. This time you seem to do better because you know what to expect and you know where the targets are positioned. As you progress faster this time and go into the tunnel once again, unlike the first time, the sequence continues and you are introduced to a new area. And also this time, you manage to reach the final target and complete the objective. Upon completion, you wake up in the open, surrounded by bodies. This time we were not tied to a chair, so could it be us who killed them? With not being captive under Jacob in his cage and finding yourself in the open, you go back to what you please doing. By this point you have done enough damage to Jacob's seed and his region and you are expected to do more because you haven't been able to escape still. Upon delivering considerable damage to Jacob's seed again, you are taken back to him where you find yourself in the same cage where Joseph spoke to you in the night time. We also discover the captive sharing the cage with us earlier now lies dead in his own pool of blood along with the captive in the neighboring cage. Probably they were not strong enough too. Jacob then goes on to tell us about a personal anecdote, after which he again opens the music box to trigger the dreamlike episode.
This time we begin with very little time, but who cares? By now, you, the player, are so good at this level that you are making progress faster than ever. By this time, the level becomes second nature to you, the player. You know it so well that this time you are not even looking for enemies. You just know where to point and shoot. And that is exactly what you are doing. Just like the last time, you finish the whole level, completing the objective of killing the last target. But strangely, you don't wake up somewhere else but in the same cage, being called on by Pratt. I'm gonna get you out of here, okay? And we're gonna get out of here, okay? Only you, only you. Hey, what about me? What about me? You aren't strong enough. You have to get out of here before it starts again. Follow me. If you pay attention, you will find Pratt's behavior to be very strange. The way he says, only you. Okay, only you. Only you. And how he tells the other captive he is not strong enough. You aren't strong enough. Like he exactly knows who is strong enough for Jacob's plans now. Pratt's behavior suggests he is under some kind of Jacob's spell and working on his commands. Then he tries to explain to you the plans of Jacob. Pratt shows you a picture of Eli and tries to tell you how Jacob has everything planned and how Jacob is trying to get into your head. He's got it all planned out. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Then he's got you. It becomes second nature routine. He gets in your head. And you don't even realize it. Eventually, the sirens go off and only you starts playing through the speakers. The plan was to escape together, but Brad somehow manages to get you out of the compound. No! No! Sorry. For one last time, after building a full resistance against Jacob's seal, you are brought back to the same cage. Don't worry, you'll be out of here soon enough. Did you think you were free? Well, you little buddy. Went to a whole lot of trouble for nothing. That's okay. He knows better now. I told you, you're not a hero. You are a tool. You know your purpose. You know it from the beginning. For one last time, Jacob opens the music box again and triggers the episode. This time, we begin with only 15 seconds on the timer. But this time, you, the player, do not even care about the timer. You have finished this level multiple times now and you know exactly how to beat it this time as well. You are going faster than ever. You know right where to point and shoot. You've done this so many times now that you are on autopilot now and you just want to get done with this level quickly. You are not even thinking anymore but shooting and moving forward. You are not even paying attention anymore. You just know what to do. You make your way to the last area and finally put a bullet in the final target and oh god. Before you even realize it, it was Eli standing in front of you. Only you could make this world seem right. Only you. Only you could have gotten this close. 
Only you could have earned his trust. It was always only ever you. Good work. You did it. You passed your test. You made your sacrifice. But now, you're alone. And you're weak. And we know what happens to the weak. I call her. It's what I do. I'll be outside waiting for you. Jacob Seed used not the character, but you, the player, as a tool to reach Eli. He brainwashed not the character, but you, the player. And that is one of the very ingenious and moving level designs that I have experienced. If you've played this level, and if the design managed to carry out the experience the way it intends on you, then you would absolutely agree how well designed the level is, and how successful and influencing the brainwash actually is. With every repetitive gameplay, the goal was to get you familiar to the level so well that going about the level becomes a second nature to you. Notice the commentary of Jacob Seed as you go about the level every time. He'd say things like good, excellent, well done. Like subconsciously he's suggesting you how you are doing great, you're doing the right thing, you're doing exactly what is expected. And every time you finish the level by killing the last target, he'll say, perfect. Like everything is going as planned. Like we, the players, are getting trained and performing just like Jacob wants us to. Just like in armies, how you are trained and judged based on your performance. Also, pay attention to the subliminal messages. The most noticeable is in this hallway. The very first time we experienced a dreamlike episode, the message on the wall says, train. Like training ourselves to go about the level. Or maybe referring to how we have begun the training to fulfill Jacob's plan. In We Must Be Strong, the message on the wall says Hunt, and also a deer runs by. This is also the first time we complete the whole level. So the message Hunt is maybe referring to hunting the positions of all the targets. Like when hunting, you first sneak up on the location of your target. Here it's suggesting you to hunt the positions of your target so you memorize it and it becomes second nature. The third time, the message on the wall says kill and also it's a wolf that runs by this time. It's like the message now suggesting you to only worry about killing your targets now that you remember their positions. Like when hunting, once you have sight of your target, your next move is to kill it. Just like a wolf hunting for and then killing the deer. And finally in only you, the message says sacrifice, suggesting you to sacrifice Eli, your final target in this level. Also notice the subliminal messages behind the final target, suggesting you to behave the way the level wants you to, or the way Jacob Seed wants you to. And that pretty much wraps up the breakdown of this beautiful and ingenious work of level design. What do you think about it? I'd love to know your personal thoughts on this. Please write it down in the comments. Also, consider subscribing for more in-depth analysis and video essays on game design. I am Tushar Dave, and this was Crows and Pigeons. Thank you for watching.